In my hand is a Vistatech brand quadcopter drone that I picked up from the discount store Ollie's for a mere $30. Is it a deal or is it a dud? I'll let you know on Thrifty AV. I had a 30% off coupon at Ollie's and I decided to use it to buy this Vistatech brand drone. Now I'm not going to do a comprehensive review in this video. This is going to be an unboxing and my initial impressions of this drone. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the unboxing. Here is the retail packaging for the Vistatech quadcopter drone. Stream live video to your smart device. It doesn't say what resolution the video is. I'm going to find out. Wi-Fi, take a photo, record video, LED lights. I'm going to guess I have to install an app to use that. Headless, six axis, altitude hold, one key landing, 360 flip. The price tag says $39.99. I did not pay that. I had a 30% off coupon from the store Ollie's. And the manager of Ollie's who was there that night uh, said that this uh, has fewer returns than the other brand of uh, drone that they were selling at that store. So hopefully this is going to work. It is taped shut down here and it doesn't appear to have been retaped. This is somewhat small. It's about the size of my hand here. There is a remote and it looks like some assembly will be required. There are a couple of spare blades here. That's good. Looks like it's going to charge via micro USB. These guards here just snap into place and I definitely want the guards here because I am a drone rookie. The remote takes three AA batteries so let me get it hooked up. The battery cover snaps in place and it has a hole here to uh, screw it down but there was no screw with this. It did, however, come with a tiny little screwdriver. There's a little sticker on a wire here that says 480p. So I'm going to guess that's the resolution of this camera right here. This is a manual adjustment. You can shoot either almost horizontal or you can shoot almost straight down from the perspective of the drone or anywhere in between. However, this is not something you can adjust on the remote. So Wherever the camera is when you take off, it's going to be there for the entire flight. I should probably read the instructions, but this appears to be the battery. And here is the micro USB port. Now I doubt this battery supports quick charge. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 2.4 amp charge there. And I have a red light on the battery. I'm going to see if that changes color after a while or goes off. While I'm waiting for the battery to charge, I'm going to go ahead and download the app uh, so that I can connect this with a smartphone. The app is called HFun Pro. Opening the app here. Now there's a start button here, but I'm not going to really start this app until I get the drone up and running. Okay, it's been 40 minutes and this red light's gone off. I'm going to assume that means this battery is full. Let's test this device out. Sometimes it helps to read instructions. It says I have to hold this down for two seconds. Okay, and then I got to turn this on. When I hit the remote up and then down, the light went solid. Well. On the remote, the center button turns the remote on and off. To pair with the drone, you take the left joystick and go up and then down. Now it is paired, assuming that your drone has its battery on and ready to go. Uh, to do the one key takeoff, it's this up arrow button. The one key landing is this one. The left joystick will let you... Uh, bring up or down the drone's elevation up goes up and down goes down left turns the drone counterclockwise from the perspective above the drone or clockwise from the perspective below it 
right is the opposite. Uh, this controller here will make the drone veer left or veer right or veer forward or veer backward. If your drone is drifting a little bit, if it's drifting forward or backwards, you can use these buttons to fine tune it. If it's drifting left or right, you can use these two buttons. Looking at the top of the remote, uh, this button right here is an auto calibration button. Uh, supposedly this will prevent it from drifting. This uh, will do a 360 flip and roll. Over here is headless mode. Uh, supposedly I'll be able to control this uh, irregardless of the position of the front of the drone and this is a high low speed adjustment. My first few attempts at recording footage of me flying the drone weren't exactly a success. I was having trouble with my wireless microphone and I was having quite a bit of trouble controlling the drone in the windy conditions. I tried to get the drone up over this tree, but no, I collided with the tree. A few days later, it was not so windy, but it was much colder. I'm now recording video coming from the camera on this. I'm going to do the quick launch. No, don't go over there. After quite a bit of trial and error with the low wind conditions, I really started to get the hang of it. I'm going to try to go up. All right. I'm trying to point the camera at me while I'm controlling the drone here. The HFUN Pro app allows you to capture footage on your phone via Wi-Fi. I thought I was recording during this whole session, but this is the only footage that I captured of the snow using the HFUN Pro app. I was bound and determined to capture some footage from the drone, so even though it was still windy a few days later, I went ahead and tried it again. Here the drone crashes into a tree. On my very next launch, I had a little bit more success keeping it up in the air. I was still having trouble pointing the camera at me. Here I am, you can see me in the shot there. Uh, now it's tilted too much to show me. You can see the sidewalk in front of my house, so there's my feet. Okay, here we go. Uh, at this point the wind caught it and I couldn't get it back and it started to drift on me and it drifted out of range of the Wi-Fi and the video stops. Looking at the media info for the footage captured by the app it is an MPEG-4 with a AVC codec. The bitrate is 3952 kbps. It says 1280 by 720 but Man, it really doesn't look that good. The display aspect ratio is 16 to 9, frame rates constant, 20 frames per second. I would have preferred 30 frames per second. Color space is YUV, subsampling 420, bit depth A, progressive scan. This is not a comprehensive review of the Vistatech drone. This is just my first impressions. I have not tested the battery life on it yet. I haven't even mastered all the controls on it yet, uh, like the headless feature and the ability to do rolls and stuff like that. I'm still learning how to keep it where I want it in the sky, which is rather difficult if there's any wind at all. I mean, 10 mile an hour wind will make this thing go in a direction you don't necessarily want it to go. So it is somewhat hard to control in the wind, but it's better for me to learn with a toy than with a serious enthusiast, you know, hobbyist drone that costs a lot more than 30 bucks. Now, as far as the uh, video footage that the app was catching, first of all, when you're using the app, uh, it connects via Wi-Fi, so you can't be hooked up to any other Wi-Fi uh, at the same time. It becomes a dedicated Wi-Fi 
and it does have a limited range. I hit the limit of the range on this uh, during the last bit of capture I did. Now the footage says it's 720p, but uh, I was seeing images that did not look 720p. I'm not sure if this camera is capable of that, even though the app is capturing at that resolution. Frame rate, 20 frames per second, a little bit disappointing. Uh, 30 is pretty much the standard uh, minimum resolution you would want for video footage. So 20, yeah, well, like I said, this is a toy. Now, as a toy, I'm going to keep playing with it. I want to learn how to control this better. So you might expect a follow-up, especially if this video does good, of the VistaTech quadcopter drone. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone. <laughs>